Minister Rico Robinson, if he would come and consecrate this offering, amen, that you have brought, amen, to the house of the Lord, amen. Thank you, Minister Robinson. Praise God. that amen he stepped right to the plate amen like he was ready amen. praise God look at your neighbor and say neighbor hey, you gotta be ye ever so ready you don't ever know when God gets ready to use you amen all you gotta do is just be ready amen so when God calls you can answer amen here am I Lord amen and so we thank God for you this time amen we're going to Amen. Hear a selection from our praise team again. Amen. And after their selection, the next voice that you will hear will be the voice of Minister Roger Green Jr. Hear ye, hear ye him. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I yeah. see he's got one fan. Amen. Praise God. We thank God. Amen. For you this time, praise team. Clap your hands if you know it. Say he's able. Oh, say God is able. God is able to do what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill. He's gonna fulfill. Yeah, yeah. to you. So don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't, Cause he won't oh, so he's able, he's able. Yeah. do you believe it do you receive it he's able, he's able. I know he is I believe it yeah sing it again oh God is able God is able to do just what he said he he's gonna fulfill he's gonna Yes, one more time to sing. God, God is able. God is able to do what He said. What He said. Do you believe it 
today. He's going to fulfill. He's going to fulfill. Yeah, yeah. Don't you give up on God. Don't give up on God. God won't. Come on and clap your hands if you know that he's able. He's able. I believe it. Oh, now if you help me sing this part. Say, oh, 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 oh he's able. Say, oh, 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 oh. Too hard he's able. for my God. Got to solve. He's a healer. He's a provider. My deliverer. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. Now say this. Say yes, he is. 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 My healer. Yes, he is. My deliverer. Yes, he is. My way maker. Yes, he is. My provider. Yes, he is. When I'm lonely. Yes, he is. My best friend. Yes, he is. My best friend. Yes, he is. My best friend. Yes, he is. Anything I need. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Anything I need. Come on and lift your hands and worship him. Come on and bless him. If you know that he's able, if you know he can do anything, open your mouth and declare it. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, he is. 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 He's working it out. Yes, he is. Making a way. Yes, he is. Fixing it right now. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. No need to worry. Yes, he is. God got it. God able. God able. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, Oh, oh, oh. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Oh, don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Sing it with me. Don't give up. Don't give up on God. He's right there. He give up on He's you. holding you up. He's holding you don't up. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't. Cause he won't give up on No matter you. what's going on. No matter what you've been through. Don't give up on God. He won't. He won't give up oh, on you. Cause he's able. Hallelujah. Everybody stand on the feet. Say, oh, 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 he's able. Let me hear you sing. Oh, 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 oh he's able. Come on, everybody stand. If you got legs, stand. Oh, 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 oh he's able. 
where we gave up but in the midst of you giving up God still stood there consistent and say I'm faithful I'm still faithful oh somebody ought to get that in your spirit God say I'm still faithful I haven't left you I haven't walked out on you I haven't abandoned you I'm still able Somebody tap your neighbor and say, you need a wake-up call. You, you need a, a wake-up call. You need a wake-up call. You, you need a wake-up call, sir. I, I, uh, I travel often, and, and oftentimes, uh, because of, uh, of the tiredness 
of travel and I stay in a hotel and oftentimes because I don't trust myself to wake up I call down to the front desk and I tell them I need a wake up call y'all not gonna hear me be be because if, if, if I don't I might miss it y'all not gonna hear me uh, somebody needs a wake up call in this place uh, and, and you might be snatching somebody from hell can you just be your neighbor's wake up call and tap them on the shoulder and tell them neighbor wake up he's still able I don't want you to miss it today. I, I don't want you to oversleep through it. I don't want you to be so drained from what you're going through that you forget the fact that God is able. Forget the fact that God will never leave you nor forsake you. He's able. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 19 through 23. God wants to speak to his people on this morning. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 19 through 23. Pray for me, Pastor Scripture. I believe God wants to speak to someone in, on this morning. And this is his word, and I believe that he wants to speak to someone. I'm definitely grateful for Brother Michael Durant being in the house. Let's give God a praise for him. Amen guest psalmist on today, very dear brother, who stepped right in into the house and, and helped us out and ministered with our, our praise team. Give them a hand. And Minister Nathan Mellix, he and brother Michael Durant and his sister Nicole are working on a project. They were in the city doing some studio work and he just wanted to be in the house of the Lord and, and he wanted to uh, help us out. Brother Nathan asked me, could sit in and help us out. I said, absolutely. This is an apostolic brother with an anointing. He wanted to sit in, so we definitely thank God for him. He, he stepped in like, like uh, this was his house, did he not? And he blessed us. We thank God for him. Lamentations 3, verse 19, 19 through 23, we thank God for our leaders. We had an awesome leadership session on yesterday, and for our pastor and assistant pastor, we thank God for him. Amen. That's Brother Michael. Let's give God a praise for him. Thank you, brother. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep singing uh, to, to demons tremble. Uh, keep singing and to things change in people's atmosphere. Uh, life, uh, I believe that when you sing and, and when you sing under the anointing of God, uh, sometimes you don't see it, but there's a shift in the spirit. So I thank God for your anointing and for your willingness to serve. And I pray that God uh, multiplies your gift and, and continues to add unto you uh, leaps and bounds because you you're not seeking to be seen. You're not seeking for a name, uh, but you just want to lift up the name. Y'all not going to hear me. Y'all not going to hear me. See, 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 we can flatter folk that don't, don't even have a mind to minister. And, and, and then we have somebody who is a minstrel and a Levite that's pouring out of their heart under the anointing of God. And we won't even tell them uh, that, 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 that we appreciate them. So I, I, I want to take this time just to appreciate your ministry. This ain't the first time that he's done this. He's helped us on our council, uh, uh, came and sung and done some great things, and he never asked for anything in return. Uh, doesn't uh, come with a lot of fanfare or grandeur, and I appreciate people with that type of spirit uh, who, who just want to worship and just want to bless the Lord. Amen? Lamentations chapter 3. I'm not going to take up your time much longer. Lamentations 3, verse 19 through 23. Let me read it in your ears while you follow with your eyes. Are you? Do you have it? Amen. Let's read. Remembering mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind. Therefore have I hope. It's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. I'd like to use for a thought, if you could, take your neighbor and say, say, I haven't forgotten. I haven't forgotten. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I haven't forgotten. I haven't forgotten. Uh, if, if, we, if we would be consistent with possibly our culture, we might say, I ain't forgotten. I ain't forgotten. I ain't forgotten. 
Lamentations chapter 3. Uh, it's interesting now because when we look at this particular passage of scripture, we find here this particular book is a sequel to uh, the prophet Jeremiah's writing. Whenever we look at the book of Lamentation, this book means to, uh, to cry, to lament. To, to lament means to cry or to uh, be increasingly sorrowful with tears. And we find here that this particular writer, this uh, prophetic teacher, uh, Jeremiah, this prophet, which we call him the major prophet, we say oftentimes in, in logical studies, when we're uh, looking at scripture, when we talk about the major and the minor prophets, we're not uh, calling them major and minor in terms of significance, but we're calling them major and minor uh, compared to the length of the book or the number of prophecies that they prophesy. So when we find it here, we find Jeremiah is the second of the five major prophets. We understand that Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel were these major prophets that we look at find here that Jeremiah is writing here, this is the second book of lamentation, is lamenting uh, the plight of Judah, lamenting the plight of God's people who are now in captivity. And the interesting thing about Jeremiah is Jeremiah is not just crying and bemoaning the fact that the people of God are going through. He's not just crying about the fact that the people of God are now in captivity. He's not just crying about uh, the fact that Jerusalem is now in ruins and now he's looking at the very city that he grew up in being burnt. That's not necessarily the reason why Jeremiah is crying. He's crying because of that, but he's also crying because he warned the people of God concerning their rebellion. He warned the people of God concerning their idolatry, their backsliding. So the frustrating thing here that we find with Jeremiah was the fact that he saw this happening. He saw there being a degradation of the body of Christ. He saw the people of God slumping into idolatry. He saw the men and women of God of our bearing, uh, going after false gods and false witnesses. So this is the thing that frustrated Jeremiah the most because he had a gifting and he had an anointing, but yet the body of Christ did not recognize his gifting and his anointing. He had power and anointing from God to see things that people could not see see, uh, but he was taken for granted by the people of God, and they could not see what he could see. In fact, the Bible lets us know that he was one of the most ridiculed of all prophets, not ridiculed outside of the church, but he was ridiculed by the church. It got to be so uh, uh, overwhelming for Jeremiah that Jeremiah said, I ain't going to preach to these folk no more. I'm just tired of doing what I've been doing because the more that I share with them what God is saying, the more that they turn a deaf ear, the more that God deals with me, it seems like the more awkward things become in the body of Christ. Some of you are like that. It seems like the more that you hold up the hold up the bloodstained banner, the more that you uh, are consistent with the teachings of God's word, the more that you cry loud against wickedness, the more that you try to share with folk how God is dealing with you spiritually, it seems like that's the more that you get ostracized. That seems like that's the more that things start to happen. Is it any out there uh, that it seems like you don't go through the most when you are doing the most or doing the least in the house of God but it seems like when you're doing the most in the house of God that's when it seems like tribulation comes. It, is it anybody out there that as long as you partying as long as you wilding out as long as you turning up uh, ain't nothing bad happening to you but the moment that you decide that I'm going to live a consecrated life the moment you decide that I want to live holy that seems like when all the floodgates open up anybody ever felt like uh, it seemed like I wasn't going through this when I was in the world it seemed like I wasn't going through this when uh, I was doing my own thing but the moment that I decided that I wanted to live uh, holy and righteousness and do something for God uh, it seemed like that's when things started to happen uh, the Bible said that Jeremiah now, he's going through this situation where he's struggling with whether to do the will of God or to just walk away from it altogether. He's struggling whether I do what God 
says or do I just turn my back on this thing altogether understand it's a difficult thing to be anointed by God it's a difficult thing to have a calling on your life and know it it's a difficult thing to have God's hand resting upon you and you know it's nothing but the hand of God because you can't run away from it you can't escape from it you can't tell yourself I quit you can't walk away from the calling that God has on your life for the Bible said in Jeremiah's case before you were shaped in your mother's womb I knew you and ordained you it's one thing to have a gift and it's another thing to have a talent there are a lot of talented folk that can't say that they've been gifted and hand selected by God there's a lot of folk that can do stuff but they ain't been gifted and anointed by God but in Jeremiah's case he told Jeremiah that before you were even shaped in your mother's womb I knew you and I ordained you it's one thing to be ordained by a sanctioning body on this earth but it's another thing to be ordained from heaven itself I y'all not gonna hear me there's a lot of people that have ordinations in Bible way in PAW in all other sanctioning bodies but some of those that hold paper credentials are not necessarily heavenly credentials because you can be ordained by man by a stamp but by being ordained in heaven uh, is being ordained by a seal y'all not gonna hear me uh, you can keep your rubber stamp uh, as long as I got the heavenly seal uh, because when I have the heavenly seal uh, it can't be broken your, your ink can fade uh, uh, you can throw the certificate away uh, you can revoke my manly ordinations uh, but when I'm sealed in heaven my seal in heaven is eternal my seal in heaven is irrevocable meaning you can't revoke it because I do something you don't like you can't revoke it because you don't like me you can't revoke it if you don't like the way I preach you can't revoke it because you don't like what I wear but when I have a seal in heaven uh, uh, nobody can take it from me uh, I'll touch your neighbor and say not only can nobody take it from you uh, uh, you can't disqualify yourself uh, uh, so the Bible says now uh, that Jeremiah was struggling with this uh, because not only had he been called uh, but he had been ordained by God uh, to be a prophet tell your neighbor uh, whatever God ordains you to be uh, you can't escape it uh, if God ordains you to be a prophet uh, you can shut your mouth all you want to uh, but God will cause his word to overflow uh, and if he got to cause you to regurgitate his word uh, he'll open up your mouth uh, and cause you to say stuff uh, that you were determined not to say uh, that's why Jeremiah said uh, I said I wasn't going to say nothing to these folk uh, but it was just like fire uh, shut up in my bones uh, that the more I try to suppress it uh, the more that it burned me on the inside uh, I'm speaking to somebody in this place uh, that's been running from your calling uh, running from your purpose uh, running from your anointing uh, but God won't let you sleep uh, God won't let you get comfortable God won't let you sit down uh, because God is saying I not only called you uh, but I ordained you uh, somebody shout and say God I hear you uh, uh, the Bible's telling us now uh, that Jeremiah was a persecuted prophet. Uh, he was in a day uh, of disappointment. Uh, he was in a day where folk uh, didn't want to live right. Uh, he was in a day where uh, the church was on a roller coaster, uh, up and down, up and down. Uh, he lived in a day uh, where there were 20 kings of Judah. Uh, uh, there were some good and some bad. Uh, they started out with Rehoboam. Uh, he was bad they went to Abijah he was bad they went to King Asa he was good they went to Jehoshaphat he was good they went to Jehoram he was bad they went to Azahiah he was bad they went on and on and on bad bad good good bad 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 good 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 
all the way down. They had 12 bad kings and only good uh, eight good kings. 20 kings all together. And all through the good and the bad, God would warn them, you need to leave those idols alone. You need to get away from your backsliding. You need to come back unto me. But they did not hearken and did not listen. But the Bible says now that during Jeremiah's time, the people of God go into captivity. Now could you imagine now being this bustling metropolis, not only from a natural point of view, but from a spiritual point of view. The whole world looked to the city of David. The whole world looked to Jerusalem for sanctity and holiness. The whole world looked to Jerusalem as being the center or the Mecca of the true and living God. The whole world looked at Jerusalem as being the pantheon of what godliness and holiness was supposed to be. But yet while the rest of the world are looking at them, they're going up and down in a roller coaster. They went up and down so much that the people of God begin to cause a reproach to the name of God. Even so much so that the world no longer really embraced real prophecy. It got so bad that the real prophet couldn't be heard because folks were so accustomed to hearing all of these false prophets. Oh, y'all not going to hear me. I submit to you we live in a day where folks don't even believe in prophecy no more because we got so many prophet liars that will conjure up strange fire before the Lord and they will preach out of their own accord and they will declare out of their own mouth and they will prophesy based upon their pet peeves and they won't say thus save the Lord but I come to tell someone don't lose your confidence in prophecy don't lose your confidence in the word of God God will still have someone I don't care if it's 150 false prophets God will raise up a true prophet among you to tell you thus saith the Lord did not the prophets of Baal rise up against Elijah on that mountain called Carmel and they assembled together all 50 of these prophets of 150 of these prophets of Baal to conjure up false prophecies unto their false God but the Bible said that God caused fire to rain down at the voice of Elijah to show them that I don't care what the majority say you better stick with the signs and the wonder I don't care how much folk lie to you and give you these false prophecies that only tickle your ears that only make you feel good for a season you better listen clearly to the voice of the Lord and if the prophecy don't line up with scripture then you need to walk away I could care less what God what things are happening in the music industry why do I gotta prophesy on the music industry they ain't got nothing to do with the word of the Lord. Why do I have to have a prophecy concerning oil prices? Who cares about oil prices? That ain't got nothing to do with the kingdom of God. So be careful with all of these prophecies that have nothing to do with the coming of the Lord. But when you see a prophet that's crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. That's the one that you incline your ears to. Not the prophet that says, prepare ye the way of Beyonce. Not the prophet that says, prepare ye the way of Riri. Not the prophet that says, prepare ye the right way of Kanye. But you need to hear the prophet that say, that as in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Lord. You need to hear the prophet that says, as it was in the days of Noah they will be forbidding to marry they'll be lover of themselves more than lovers of God they'll be proud and boastful 
Exodus. You need to hear the prophet that will say, Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Do I got about four or five folk in here that's tired of getting their ears tickled, tired of being stroked, tired of emotional sensationalism, but they're looking for a prophet that will cry loud and spare none, that will howl at the altar and will weep before the porches and say woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. Do I got any folk in here that want to make it in? Forget if I'm got a Bentley. I don't care about platinum and ice. For what would it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Tell somebody, stop telling me how to have prosperity and letting me die and go to hell. Oh, don't get it twisted. I believe in nice stuff. I believe we're supposed to prosper and be in good health even as our soul prosper. But what would it profit me to have an iced out rolly and a wicked heart? What would it profit me to have gators and furs and dying and going to hell? I come to tell someone it's time for the true worshipers to stand flat footed and say for Christ I live and for Christ I die that won't compromise that won't walk away from the faith that won't give up if you believe it shout glory uh, so it's easy now to get discouraged about what's going on in your life it's easy to get to the point where I don't want to do it no more it's easy to get to the point where you say God enough is enough it's easy to get to the point where I'm tired of praising through the midst of it anybody ever been through that you can be honest in here when you got to the point where I'm tired of just pressing through I'm tired of just being an overcomer. I'm tired of acting like I have victory. I'm tired of acting like I got uh, uh, happiness. I'm tired of just going through the motions. When is it ever going to be my time? When am I going to ever get to the point where I'm not struggling no more? This was the problem now that Jeremiah had. Jeremiah had this problem because why? I call it emotional betrayal. It's emotional betrayal. I look at Jeremiah now because he was the realest of real. His emotions would always get the best of him. He couldn't hide his emotions. Some of us are good at hiding how we feel. We can come into the church and the saints say, how are you doing? We say, I'm blessed and highly favored and give them a nice pretty smile. But no deep down inside, I'm dying. Well, thank God for the real saints that when you ask them how they doing, they don't mean to complain, but they say, I ain't doing too well. Could you pray for me? This is how Jeremiah was. He was the kind of saint that was like, I can't just sit here and act like I don't see Jerusalem burning. He was the saint that say, I can't just act like I don't see them taking our women and children. He was the one that said, I can't just act like I don't see my brothers and sisters dying because his emotions would betray him every time. Do I got about four or five folk in here who emotions betray you sometimes? That sometimes saved, sanctified, filled with a whole bunch of Holy Ghost. You still cry. Anybody in here saved and sanctified, full with a whole lot of Holy Ghost. That sometimes you can't lift your head up. Do I got any folk in here that's real enough to say sometimes I don't feel like churching. Sometimes I don't feel like lifting my hand. Sometimes I don't feel like being nice. Sometimes I don't feel like turning the other cheek. Anybody in here that realize there's a conflict between what I want and what God wants. And what I'm trying to tell you here is Jeremiah was the same way all throughout Jeremiah he complained and cried and bemoaned his plight he was on an emotional 
roller coaster. He could have been, if you call it, schizophrenic, if you will. Because at one moment he felt good, but the next moment he felt bad. But somewhere along the lines, in Lamentation chapter 3, the more he began to think about it, the more he began to change. The more he began to think about it, the more his mind changed. I want to tell you someone, there's a mystery in misery. I'll say it again. There's a mystery in misery. Sometimes things can be so bad for so long that it no longer seems so bad that the things are so bad. Y'all not going to hear me. Anybody been miserable so long? That thing's been bad so long that it don't even seem bad no more. I, I can endure it. It don't even seem like it's even bad as I should be. And folks look at you now and say, why you ain't falling all over the place? After all you've been through, after all the mess you endure, why you ain't gave up yet? After all the struggle you've been through, after everything you lost, why you ain't cussed yet? After all the folks that done done you dirty and done walked out your life, why you ain't left God? I submit to you because there's a mystery in misery. Because when you're miserable with God, you got to understand that things and people change. But the one thing that's consistent is that God never changed. So somewhere in the middle of your misery, I believe that God causes us to have recall, to begin to remember after all I've been through, folks left, but God didn't. After all I've been through, I lost my job, but I didn't lose God. After all I've been through, I lost my mind, but I still had God. Somebody in here. They're going through that right now. You got the mystery of misery. You're going through so much that you realize, you know what? This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. It's of the Lord's mercy that I'm not consumed. Anybody thought about that and thought about it for real, for real? And said, Lord, when I really think about it, it was bad, but it could have been worse when I really think about it. I lost my job, but I should have lost my house. When I really think about it, I lost this relationship, but I shouldn't have had it in the first place. Oh, somebody in here ought to shout out to God with a voice of triumph. His mercy, His grace, His unmerited favor. God has compassion on touch your neighbor and say neighbor I'm so thankful that God had compassion and not pity because compassion is different than pity pity denotes that you're pitiful and the word pity means it's literally like me looking down into a pit and seeing someone trapped I'm not in the pit so I can't I identify with why they're down there or how they got there but when I have compassion compassion comes from two words come is the Latin for for from and with and passion comes from the word meaning heart so when I have compassion it's mean I have a heart that's linked together with you so I have compassion as if we're having a heart to heart so what God is saying, my mercies don't fail because my compassion is so heavy upon you that God's heart is linked with your heart. That God said, I can't let you die. I can't let you fall. I can't let you give up because when you give up, it breaks my heart. I can't let you struggle. I can't let you fall by the wayside because when I do, it breaks my my heart. I need about two or three folk to stand on their feet and say thank God for compassion. 
thank God that your heart is connected to me. You won't let me go. You won't let me leave. You won't let me give up. Your compassion fail not. They're renewed every morning. Somebody help me preach and tell your neighbor. Say neighbor, if you made it to the morning, you got new mercy. I don't care what you did on last summer. Somebody ought to preach this thing. I don't care what you did. Even last night, if you made it to the morning, you got new mercy. I don't care what you did when you were in your teens. I don't care what mistake you made before you got saved. If you made it through the night, you got new mercy. That's enough to shout on right there. That's enough to bless the Lord on right there. That's enough to lift them on right there. Somebody ought to give God a glory and a praise in this place. That's do his name. Hallelujah. I'm about to take my seat. I'm about to take my seat. But before I take my seat, I have to tell you this. He said, I remember it now. The wormwood and the gall. He said, I remember that. Why is that remembering? Why do I got to remember that? The wormwood was this wood that was a bitter reed that they would eat upon. And it was bitter to taste. But he said, said God he gave me this wormwood he gave me this bitterness remembering the gall the gall was the irritation that you would get on your skin and the more you scratched it the more it would irritate you but yet it was so irritating you couldn't help but scratch it but yet the more you scratched it the more it irritated you this was symbolic of our pain and our suffering that I don't want to scratch it but when I don't scratch it it gets so unbearable that I can't help but scratch somebody in this place you don't want to think about what you're going through but the more you don't think about it the more you think about it and you try to bury yourself up under your pillow at night and say if I close my eyes if I can just go to sleep maybe it will all go away but when you wake up you wake up to the same set of problems so what he said though is this this one word and God calls me to remember God. I want to tell someone, stop trying to forget about your problems. Stop trying to forget about the itch. Stop trying to forget about the evil. Because God is saying, I'm going to use that very thing to cause you to remember God. I'm going to cause you to think about how unworthy you are. I'm going to cause you to think about how uh, imperfect you are. I'm going to cause you to think about how much you need God. Because uh, it's not going to get to uh, that point uh, where you reach God uh, until you get to the point uh, where you recognize you need God. Uh, What am I trying to say? Uh, Some of us uh, don't reach God uh, until we recognize uh, how much we need God. Uh, It's not until uh, you get to the point uh, that I need thee uh, every hour. Uh, I need thee. uh, that you realize uh, that God, uh, I'm nothing without you. Uh, before I take my seat, uh, I need a folk, few folk uh, that can say to God, uh, God, I ain't forgot uh, how you brought me over. Uh, God, I ain't forgot uh, how you made a way. Uh, God, I ain't forgot uh, that without you I'm nothing. Uh, God, I ain't forgot uh, that I need your mercy. Uh, God, I ain't forgot uh, it ain't my intellect. Uh, God, I ain't forgot it ain't how good looking I am God I ain't forgot it ain't my job God I ain't forgot it ain't my spouse but it's you that have reached down and picked me up out of the horrible pit pick me up out of depression pick me up away from suicide pick me up from fornication pick 
me up from idolatry. Pick me up from smoking and choking. Pick me up from sipping and tipping. Pick me up from fussing and cussing. I need someone to shout unto God and say, I ain't for God. The first thing Jeremiah said, remembering my affliction, my misery, wormwood, and the gall. What he was saying, I'm going to transliterate. Remembering how messed up I was. Before God came along and helped me. See, I don't believe that you can remember all the mess that God brought you out of and sit there like God ain't done nothing. I don't believe that you can recall to your mind and have hope and sit there like God ain't done nothing. I don't believe that you can remember just how far God has brought you and not be moved. He said, I still have them in remembrance. Is there anybody here that still remember where God brought you from? I don't say I could have been dead. I say I should have been dead and gone. But the Lord let me live on. You better recognize. Where God had brought you from. Come on and stand to your feet. You've already been preached to. You just need to make a decision. You just need to make up your mind. You need to let your mind take you back. To when you wore the hot pants. The halter tops. And ladies and men of the night. Uh-huh. You just need to let your mind take you back when you wasn't so holy. Because Jeremiah said it is of the Lord's mercies that he didn't kill me. It is of his mercies that we are not consumed. And, and, and see, it's every day. We need God's mercy every day. And I don't care how saved you are. If you're saved, you need a more. Because you got to stay saved. Living in a world that's turned south, and you're going north, you need a more every day. I can afford not to make the decision. Give me some altar workers up here. Somebody is at a pivotal point in their life. They can't go back where they came from and they can't stay where they are and wondering how they're going to go forward. You need to come to this altar right now and kneel down on this altar. You see, it's just a mind thing. All, it just, it's just making up your mind. Are you just making a decision? Just making a choice? Now, uh, the Bible says, why halt ye between two opinions? If Baal be God, serve him. But if God be God, serve him. It's time for somebody to make a decision who they're going to serve. It's time for somebody to make a decision and stop playing. Stop vacillating back and forth. I'm going to do it, I ain't going to do it. I'm going to do it, I ain't going to do it. I'm going to do it, I ain't going to do it. Vacillating in your mind. I can do it, I can't do it. I want to do it, I don't want to do it. Stop vacillating in your mind. Make up your mind. For Christ I'll live. And for Christ I'll die. What you're saying is that from this day forward, 
I'm going to stand for what's right against what's wrong. I'm going to choose in every situation to do what's right rather than what's wrong because I have seen where choosing what's wrong will lead you and I made up my mind I don't want to go there I don't want to go down that street come on come on to this altar right now come on to this altar right now come on God is talking to somebody right now God is talking to you right now and the devil is trying to fight against what God is telling you by causing you to delay come on to this altar right now we're getting ready to pray and we're going to pray for you and you're going to break through you're going to burst through you're going to break through come on to this altar right now a child shall lead them you have your sign come come who are you who are you you're not baptized in Jesus name haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost by the evidence of speaking with other tongue as the Spirit of God gives you the utterance. Salt. Come on to this altar right now and let God help you. Listen to the psalmist. Withholding nothing I surrender all to you. Come on, let it go. Come on, let it go. Come on, get it. Let it go. Let it go. It's like a piece of chewing gum. The pleasure of sin is only sweet for a time. Only for a moment. But then it loses its savor. Come on to this altar. And let God help you. Come on and let God help you. God wants to help you. God wants to help you. Come on. We're getting ready to pray. We're getting ready to pray. He's too good to have to beg somebody to take him. When you go through enough, you'll come. When you see enough, you'll come. Maybe you're saying to God now, God, I ain't seen enough yet. I haven't experienced enough yet. But things can get a lot worse than what they are now. But before that happens, getting you to come. Um, don't go through that. Don't let that pierce your soul. Withholding nothing. I give you all of me. I give you all of me. I give you all of Hallelujah. me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let I want everyone that can stand I to stand. Give you all of me. Everyone that can I stand to stand. If 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 you got strength and movement in your limbs. I want you to stand. If you have strength and movement in your limbs, you see, that's a sign of obedience right there. There was a time when we would say in our minds, I don't care what they say, I ain't going to stand. But you've been through enough now to know that God can fix it where you can't stand. So while I have the chance, now that you're standing, all you have to do now is to get in the aisle and just walk. Just to get in the aisle and just walk. You're already standing. You're already standing. You're already standing. Half of the battle is over. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for your rich word. We thank you for your minister of the hour. 
Lord, I pray that you would refresh him for having poured out of his heart. God, I pray now that you would sweep over this altar right now, God. Every heart that's gathered around this altar right now, every soul that's on this altar right now, came, God, because they needed a word from you. They needed to commune with you. In the name of Jesus. Lord, you promised to talk to us upon the mercy seat between the sheriff films. And God, I thank you right now. I thank you right now for having a mind to gather around this altar and ask for help. For having a mind to say, Lord, I need you. God bless you. I give, I give you all of me. I give you all of me. I give, I give you all of me. I give you all. I give you all of me. I give you all of me. I give you all of me. I give you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for every soul that came to the altar, every heart.
Come by this hand and let them know that you love them. Shake somebody's hand, tell them that you love them. Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, the love that you share one Thank with the other. Withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing. 